Welcome to my opinion here on My Opinion TV. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell. So as soon as the video is released, you'll be one of the first to be notified. And today, just want to continue the saga that unfolded in Montego Bay at the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries in Montego Bay, St. James. As you are well aware, one Andre Ruddock has been charged for murder and uh, pastor of the church, the late pastor of the church, Dr. His Excellency Kevin Smith, passed away in a tragic motor vehicle accident on Church Road in Linstead. As you are aware by now, he was also posthumously charged for the killing of both persons at the church and the legal possession of firearm. So that will be over his head. So if you research anything later on in life about Kevin Smith, that will be tagged to him even in his grave. Now, what we've come to understand, there are so many things in this case that needs to be looked at. At first, we heard that shots were fired at the police. Persons were saying no shots were fired. Then we hear congregants saying, yes, Kevin Smith fired shot and police woman was there. We heard that it was a Jamaica defense major who took him to the church. All, all type of theories is in this situation. Now, the latest one is that ballistic tests have now confirmed that the gun of the police woman was fired on the night of the deadly ritual at the past pathways international kingdom restoration ministries in montego bay st james a male congregant murdered during the incident on sunday october 17 was shot and stabbed the throat of another congregant tanika gardner was slashed now based on police sources close to the matter they say spent shells recovered from the scene matched the weapon of the police woman and on the night of the incident, St. James Police Senior Superintendent Vernon Ellis reported that a pistol and an ammunition were seized. It, he also reported that the police were shot at as they tried to enter Pathway Building to rescue congregants. Now, there are so many theories that has happened in this incident. One, we heard that Kevin Smith was not uncuffed. He was not wearing seatbelt. Well, that theory has been thrown through the window based on the fact that persons have seen videos where the firefighter was taking the handcuff off Kevin Smith and passing it to the police. So that's one theory that is out the window. The other theory that a lot of persons are looking into is that with such a mm, tragic incident, and the car in which Kevin Smith was traveling with so badly damaged, why his mask was still affixed to his face in that matter? Well, for that, I can't get any answers. And, I mean, persons are saying the persons who came on the scene might have fixed it on his face. Not sure about that. The other theory that we haven't heard much about is what happened to the persons in the other vehicle that crashed into the vehicle that was carrying Kevin Smith. We haven't heard anything about those people. And those are cause for concern because a suspicious theory is right around hanging all about the situation involving this cult pastor. And, you know, as you go along, you will hear members of the church coming out and tell you that Kevin Smith ordered his members to take out life insurance policy and put him as trustee and based on what we are hearing even the young man that survived the ordeal he took out three life insurance policies and put kevin smith's name as trustee so clearly based on what i am seeing and based on my observation the persons who were the center of his attraction are the persons who intended to sacrificed were primarily the persons who took out insurance policies with his name as a trustees so there are so many 
I, I sometimes I wonder. We as Jamaicans sometimes would say, when we hear about Americans being scammed, we used to laugh and say, they are stupid. How could they persons tell them that they win money and they, they have to send money to collect the prize? But when you look at this whole mess that took place down there in Pathway Ministries, International Kingdom Restoration Ministries, you, 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 you beg to differ when you say Amer the Americans were stupid. Jamaicans are stupid. And how could this man pull off such an act against so many educated and sensible people in Jamaica without these people realizing what this man was doing? How could, in the name of Jesus Christ, you be asking money for blessings? That doesn't make any sense. Now, the other part of this puzzle that we want to talk about is that Minister of National Security, Dr. Harris Strong, has said the Jamaica Defence Force has the authority to travel without charge on the toll road in the administration of their duties. It is not routine for the police. Well, now we see what they're talking about. Isn't it time to have the law amended? The Jamaica Defence Force, they don't pay no fees if they have to move through the country, whether it's rail fees, toll fees, or boat fees. It's a part of the JDF law. It's a legacy issue as well. It comes out of the original laws. And he went on to say, if you go to the UK, the same thing occurs. He however noted that the police are refunded if they use their money to utilize the service of the toll in the line of duty. The police travel off the toll because the police have to be able to interact with stations along the route. If they go on the toll road, they get the money for it. Now, the problem a lot of police are, say, um, are having is not that they don't travel the toll, but it's a problem to get back their monies. The problem is when they are to be reimbursed for their monies, it takes years upon years. It takes a long waiting period. And when people use their hard-earned cash to pay something, they'd like to be reimbursed immediately. And that's the problem why the police officers will desist from going on the toll. Because they have their families, they got bills to pay. And if they take their hard-earned cash to pay toll fees, they would like to have back their money in a timely manner. And that there lies a big part of the problem. So instead of a police going on the toll and paying out of his pocket, he just decided to take the long route. We all understand that there might be need to connect to stations to stations on their destination. So that is one aspect. But when you have a situation where the person is going directly to MOCA, directly to the major investigation bureau to be charged for something, there's less interaction with the stations. All you got to do is travel the toll and go straight. Well, now that we know that the police has no right and no law that stipulates them to use the toll, I hope the Minister of National Security will come to the Parliament and try to figure out, put something in writing, in law, that will assist police, especially who are doing the duties of transporting prisoners back and forth that they don't have to pay. It's, it's not hard to sit down with the toll operators and have some dialogue as a part of the toll. They, these toll people making crazy money. What about allowing the Jamaica Constabulary Force to use it, especially in emergency cases. Well, the saga continues. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell. So as soon as a video is released, you'll be one of the first to be notified. Until next time, stay safe. Look out for the children, look out for a neighbor, look out for a loved one. And most of all, keep it locked on My Opinion TV.